Do you ever find yourself just kind of stuck in a rut with homemaking and not really sure how to get out of it or just kind of like discontent with it? Today we're going to talk about romanticizing homemaking and loving the life that you have. So I am a homemaker, a wife, and a mom to four beautiful kids. And although I am very thankful for everything I've been given, there are days where I just kind of feel like, ugh, I've got to do this again. I mean, we did the same thing yesterday. And it can seem very repetitive and mundane, and you don't really know your purpose anymore. I've just learned a few things over the last nine years of being married and having kids that until you see the value in what you do, it's really hard to be thankful and content in your daily tasks. When I think about romanticizing homemaking, I think of just being in the moment and content with what you've been given doesn't mean that you can't be striving for something better or more of a certain thing, but just recognizing what you have and being grateful for that and really seeing within yourself what that is. So I am a Christian and I love to see God work in the scriptures, but because we were made in his image, there's a lot of attributes that we have that were given to us by him and are things that he carries too. So one of the things that I love as a homemaker is that God was creative. And in the scripture, um, every day in Genesis, when he's talking about creating the earth, he is talking about how at the end of that day, it was good. And... I want my days to be like that. I want to know that I worked that day and I did my best. And when I look back at that day, I just want to feel like that it was good. Now, we are not God. We are not perfect. And then we are not going to have every day be like that. But we can set ourselves up in the morning or even the night before. And being in the moment during the day and even looking back in the day and making a list of all of the good things that we did, whether it was we got five loads of laundry done that day or the kitchen was cleaned up before everybody went to bed or we sat down and read a story with the kids or we had a healthy meal on the table. Just noticing those things and looking at those things can really give you a heart of contentment and joy and just being able to say, this is good. This is what God gave us. Another way that I like to romanticize homemaking is by slow living. Slow living is not being lazy. Um, it is saying no to the busyness of life and focusing on a certain task or something that is not stressful or overwhelming. So some things that I like to do with slow living is bake bread or can or garden, reading stories with my kids, going on nature walks, painting with the kids, or even by myself, reading a book, making a hot cup of tea, even though I don't particularly like a lot of tea and I don't really like to drink tea often, is something nostalgic about just having a warm cup in your hands and being able to sip on that throughout the day. There are many things that you can do with slow living, but you have to not choose a whole lot of things because then you kind of get into the whole busyness and stress and overwhelm. And slow living is not really meant to be overwhelming or stressful. It is supposed to be relaxing, still getting in your daily tasks that you're supposed to have done, 
but allowing the freedom to just be and not have to just rush off and do things. Another thing that I love to do when I am homemaking is cooking from scratch. There's just something about adding in all of those flavors on your own and just making something that your family really enjoys. It's healthier for them than going to a restaurant or buying something pre-made or pre-packaged. It's just so much more delicious. And there's something about working with your hands. I like to bring my kids in on this stuff with cooking from scratch. So it's quality time with them sometimes. Sometimes it's I am over there just being creative and figuring out what we're gonna have for supper and what spices I'm gonna use. Um, what vegetables we're gonna mix together and I will let the kids play and just to hear them laughing in the background that is an ideal moment uh, it does not always happen sometimes they are arguing and crying and you know romantic moments are not going to always be there and I feel like if they were always there we wouldn't see the significance in them if you didn't have the hard times in life you wouldn't really know what joy was. If you didn't have sick times, you wouldn't know what it felt like to be healthy all the time. You wouldn't know what to compare it to. We have to take to, in consideration that these romantic times, these ideal times, these super relaxing times are not always going to be there. But when they do come, we have to recognize them. We have to be able to sit there in that moment and just feel and just say oh my goodness like it feels so good to be here right now it feels so good to open the windows and let the fresh air come in it feels so good to light up a candle and do the dishes it feels so good to put on a pretty dress and even though I'm not going anywhere today I am going to make myself look nice because I feel good and I want to feel good and I want to look nice for my family and for my husband and those things are just so nice to be able to, to do, but also to treasure and to just live in that moment and be there. Several things that I think that every homemaker should put into their routine is your own hobbies. Things that you just enjoy doing and it doesn't really even have to serve a purpose for your family. It will serve a purpose because you will find joy and kind of be able to free yourself a little bit. Um, some of the hobbies that I love to do, I love to sing play the piano, learn things. I mean, I'm, I love learning. And so to like sit down and take a class on something or learn how to play a certain thing on a certain instrument. I love to paint. I'm not that good at it, but I do enjoy doing it. I love to sew and create things for my family. I love to can, which I've mentioned earlier. I've just learned how to do that in the last four years and I just really enjoy it. It's so fun to see all of the canned goods on the shelf that I've either grown or I've, you know, cooked it myself and canned it and knowing that we are going to have extra in our pantry for the family. I just, I enjoy that stuff so much. I love to garden. I really don't even mind pulling weeds. It kind of gets overwhelming when they get too many out in the garden, but you know, I can sit there in a patch and listen to a podcast or just think in my head what I'm doing, you know, what I want to do, learning, thinking of ideas, and it can just be a really good moment even in the weed pulling times. But finding a hobby that you love and 
pouring into that, giving it time. Um, it's just going to benefit your family because you are going to be more relaxed. I don't remember who said it, but they were talking about how when you create or you do things with your hands, you release oxytocin in the brain, which is that feel good, happy feeling. And who doesn't want a happy mom or a happy wife? So really just putting those things into your weekly or daily routines of things that are filling your cup is just going to be able to pour in and over into your family. So I really recommend that you do hobbies that you love. Now there's not a prescription for romanticizing your life. There's not a, a wake up this time of the day and do this first thing in the morning and then make sure you do this before you go to bed. Honestly guys, that's just not realistic for moms, for homemakers. Every day, even though we may have our rhythms and our routines, a crying baby at night can just obliterate any idea that you thought you might have the next day or somebody gets sick or you have to rush out and grab groceries today and it's just every day can be a challenge to feel romantic but if you take those moments that you can make for yourself and just be in the moment to think on that moment how do you feel how does it feel for your bare feet to touch the floor how does it feel to open up the windows and just feel the air on your skin or how does it feel to turn off everything and listen to the rain or sit on your front porch and watch it rain or watch the birds those things can really turn your day around if you're having a bad day thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it I do videos on homemaking some homesteading and just our holistic life that we live here. I hope that you will subscribe if you are new and let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite thing to do to make your life look romantic. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.